In the music you just heard, John Cougar Mellencamp and the song Your Life Is Now. The slides on the screen were slides before my injury, before the accident. Now, I'm here to tell you about the accident and why I'm in this wheelchair, but more than that, I'm here to share my lessons to live by, to give you some ideas as you're going through change, as you're going through tragedy, as you're going through setbacks or disappointments. It's more than just sharing the story of why is Rosemary in this wheelchair? But I want to bring some relevance to your life, personally and professionally, to think about where you are today and to think about where you could be tomorrow, to give you some ideas, to give you my relevant lessons to live by that I've learned from experience. Learn from me if any of these lessons are resonating with you and can help you as you're struggling with life, then I have achieved my mission. Have you ever had a situation where literally life came crashing down on you? That's what happened to me. I call this program just like riding a bike and you'll see soon the relevance of this phrase. You probably heard it before and each of you have some sense of when you've been on a bike and you haven't been on it for a while and you get back on it, somehow you figure out how to ride that bike again. And there's a lot of relevance to the story of the bike because now on the screen you're going to start to see the setting. The setting is a bicycle trail over in Granville, Ohio. You're seeing the headlines from the newspaper. You're seeing my crushed bicycle helmet. And literally, my world came crashing down on me. It was 17 years ago. As I look back, I want to share the story with you. It was a beautiful Saturday. It was June the 13th of 1998. And it happened to be my husband and I's third wedding anniversary. Now, this was a custom-made day for a bicycle ride. There was no threat of wind or storm or rain or anything. It was just a beautiful Saturday afternoon. And for our wedding anniversary, we decided to take our bicycles and put them on the bumper of the car in Columbus, where we lived, and drive to Granville, a 45-minute drive, to one of our favorite bicycle trails. You've probably seen them around here, those rails to trails. They were railroad tracks converted into beautiful bike trails, where the one in Granville was one of our favorite. And we drove over there, and we parked the car downtown in Granville. Mark was driving, and he went into the back to take the bikes off the back bumper. I got out of the passenger seat, and little did I know at the time that's when I took my last step. After an adversity comes an opportunity. So think about an adversity in your life that you can look back at. You've had enough time since that adversity to say, all right, what has happened in my life that is now an opportunity that wouldn't have happened had that adversity not been in my life? So if it's been a relationship that broke up, or a divorce that broke up, has enough time happened where you're meeting new people or marrying new people? And, and you're going, wow, this relationship is so much better than that last one. And as we look at other changes and other things that have happened, is there an opportunity that has followed? The symbol on the screen is a kanji. It is in um, the language of, of Japanese. When the symbol is written together with the two symbols, the word is crisis. The symbol on the left is danger. The symbol on the right is opportunity. So crisis is the combination of danger and opportunity. So as I look at this, after the adversity comes the opportunity. After the opportunity comes personal growth. That's your fresh perspective. That's your keeper for today. The next time you have an adversity, look for the opportunity and look for your personal growth so that you can be more resilient and understand that after adversity comes personal growth. Now, I want to demonstrate this with a very simple toy from my childhood. Do any of you remember the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl was developed in 1965 by the Whammo Company. I was growing up as a child during the era of Super Bowls. Do you remember playing with this ball? What, what would happen if you'd play with it in the house? Oh my gosh, <laughs> it would just go ballistic. This ball has some kind of 
potential technology has created it so that when you bounce this ball, it goes higher than you think. Now, I just have, I, I don't want to break anything in here, but just to demonstrate, that ball bounces pretty good in this room, doesn't it? It has more energy and more capacity than most balls. And that's the component that I want to bring back. As you think about your life, you want to be bouncing big. You want to bounce back strong. Bounce back like a Super Bowl. Bounce back and rebound faster rather than dwelling on the problem and getting fixated on the trouble that you're in. Move on. Thinking about it as bouncing back higher by thinking big, thinking that the idea can work. Thinking that what is your dream, what is your capacity, what is your strength, what is your resiliency like so that you can stop being in this vortex of being down. As I go through my lessons to live by, there are five. Do something new every day. Focus on a hopeful future, not on your self-pity. Believe the impossible is possible. Have more patience and get things done. And then lower your stress and your expectations of other people. Let me share with you these five lessons. Doing something new every day, I learned in physical therapy. Asking them every day, what are we going to do new today? As I took one step, and then two steps. My little steps were baby steps, but they counted as they taught me how to walk again. As I continued challenging myself and working in therapy, that's how I learned doing something new every day brought me closer to my goals. What are you going to do new today? Heck, when did you do anything new? So here's some ideas for you on the screen as you think about doing something new that maybe you just haven't done for a while to change things up a bit. My thoughts are you've got to look at your goals, you've got to look at your action plan, you've got to write these out and celebrate your victories. Do something towards your goals every day, be it personal or professional. As we look at goal setting, you've had lots of uh, information here, I'm sure, to support you. But put them in writing, put them in front of you, share them with people, help you to remember what it is every month that you are working forward to having achieved, keep them in view and move forward in your goals. When I looked at resiliency, what were some of the factors that caused me to be resilient? I think number one is my motivation to move on. I had, a, I had built a life, I had a PhD, I had two businesses, I had a lot of investment here that I wanted my life back and I wanted to figure out what could I do now that I have a spinal cord injury. So one of the things I want you to think about is your motivation, whatever your dream is, whatever your goal is. Think back in terms of how badly you want it. The example is I wanted to learn how to ski again. I was a decent skier before the injury, and when I heard about adaptive sports, I heard that you could ski from a monoski. Any of you ski and seen anyone in a monoski before on slopes? Let me explain what it is. You're seeing the photo on the screen. This is the sled. I sit in the sled and they have a seat belt. It weighs 40 pounds. I'm over one ski, mono ski. I have two poles and the little ski tips are what I steer with. It's the scariest thing I've ever had to learn how to do. And I question myself on the beginner slope over in Bell, in, um, at Mad River when I started learning how to ski again. A 40 pound piece of equipment on one ski balanced on these two little poles and they're putting me on this beginner hill and saying balance yourself and then real quickly turn these things to slow down to traverse the hill. There's no way to stop. You just keep going side by side slowing yourself down. Here I am at 44 years old learning to ski again, and I was just frustrated and beyond scared. I could feel the sweat pouring off of me at the top of the hill thinking, I've got to go down this hill without falling. It was just mind boggling. This is where I learned about courage. And I started to say to myself, why am I up here anyway? Why did I come to this ski resort today to learn to ski? I started second guessing things. And then I said to myself, I wanted to take my life back. I wanted to do as much as I could with what I had 
and adapt my life the way it could be. And then I started seeing all these kids skiing all around me. And it was ticking me off that they could do it and I couldn't. They were giving me the incentive. I was seeing Mark skiing and I thought, I want to ski with him. I want to go on vacations with him like we used to. I want to enjoy my life and have recreation. Wouldn't you? Your motivation. Here's the key question. Think about something that's tough for you to do. You got something in your mind? If your life depended on it, could you get it done? If your answer is yes, then what do you think's missing? Motivation. Because if you could do it, if your life depended on it, you're telling me you have the resources, the skills, the talents, and the knowledge to get it done. All you're lacking is that drive, that motivation. So think about it. Next time you have something tough to do, say, man, if my life depended on it, I could get this done. Move forward and get it done.